Hi and welcome to Evenings with Anne. Thank you for joining me. Well, last year my husband and I booked tickets to the UK and then the coronavirus came along. So like many of us, um, we've been impacted by the coronavirus and our plans have had to change. And I think what the restrictions have done has been, it's highlighted just how uncertain the future can be. During this period, when our flights were changed and deferred and then deferred again and then deferred again, and then our carrier Qantas stopped flying, my husband and I thought, we're never going to travel. It's, we're just here. Our trip's gone, done and dusted. But um, during this time, I read a verse from Proverbs 16, verse 3, which said, Commit your ways to the Lord in whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Now, I don't think this means my plans will succeed simply by saying, God, this is what I'm planning, now make it happen. Committing my way to the Lord means accepting that God's plans are always to care for his people, to give them hope and a future. But this can mean taking his followers in directions they didn't expect to be going. With this in mind, Dale and I applied for exemptions from the government to travel outside the country. And then we committed the course of action to the Lord, knowing that whatever the decision, we would be where God wanted us to be and according to his timing. While we waited for a response from the government, some words of Jesus also encouraged me to keep committing and trusting our way to the Lord. When talking to his followers, he said, if you decide to live a life of God worship, then it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your cupboard are in fashion. Look at the birds. They're free and unfettered, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. What I'm trying to do is to get you to relax, to not be so preoccupied with getting so you can respond to God's giving. People who don't know God and how he works fuss about these things, but you know both God and how he works. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, God provisions. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Well, just three days before we wanted to leave Australia, our exemptions arrived. And because Qantas wasn't flying, we then looked around for alternatives and we were able to buy affordable tickets from another carrier. We aren't sure when we're going to return to Australia because now our flights, our return flights have been cancelled. But just Dale and I know that whatever happens, we can trust the timing of our return to the Lord. James, the brother of Jesus, followed up Jesus is teaching with advice to the followers about making plans for the future. And he said, now I have a word for you who brashly announce today at the latest tomorrow, we're off to such and such a city for the year. We're going to start a business and make a lot of money. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. You're nothing but a wisp of fog, catching a brief bit of sun before disappearing. Instead, make it a habit to say, if the master wills it and we're still alive, we'll do this or that. Jesus and James challenged us, you and I, 
to be willing to let go our own agendas, to be content, to let Christ's currents of divine love meet our needs and shape our futures as individuals and as church communities to commit our ways to the Lord. I leave you now with a prayer from David Adams in his book, Tides and Seasons. God of time, God of space, fill this moment with your grace. God of motion, God of peace, from each sin give release. God of quiet, God of might, keep us ever in your sight. Amen. I will see you tomorrow. Bye for now.